So breathe deeply, prepare. And we know that at the end of this meditation, each one of you will be given an answer to one special question. So what is that for you? What does that mean? Where shall I be? Shall I move? Shall I change my job? Shall I do something different for my health? You know what that question is. It's a question from your heart, full of passion, that you really want the answer to and you deserve the answer to. Prepare yourself. Move your energy into the heart. Bring out that sweet child. Let them sit on your lap and share with you all the love in this room and really love them. They are the magic piece of this answer. So breathe deeply. Move your awareness into your heart. Feel a beautiful golden energy in your heart. And let it expand out to encompass you, all of you. And think about what the question is. Think about it. Ask it when it's appropriate. And by the end of the channel, know that you have the answer. Know it's there. We ask that the iridescent rainbow mist fills you and encircles each one of you with love beyond our present knowledge of love, a greater, grander love that is now present for us. Greetings, dear ones. I am Kryon of Magnetic Service. I say that as a standard greeting, you see, but I never left. The energy of the love of spirit has been in this room all day long. There has been an overwhelming increase in energy here in these hours with you not all of you are realizing or having the epiphany yet of what really is transpiring it is not a teaching session it's a celebration we should celebrate the obvious first that you're here 
There was an old plan in an older energy that you had set up. A potential that you would not be here. Very viable this plan was and the prophets and the seers told of it. The grandfathers knew of it. You knew of it. The scriptures told of us the indigenous predicted it and it has you in a plan whereby now there would be no humanity on 8808 when you can see this reflected in the writings the seers the prophets you might say well well did they have it wrong and the answer was no the potential was correct but this is the truth, dear human being, and that is that you write your futures as you go. And we've spoken of these things. So many times the frustrations of the light worker are that you don't know what's happening. The frustration being, yet again, I say, that you don't know where you're supposed to be, what you're supposed to be doing, or why things are happening as they are. And you beg God for an answer. And I'll tell you, spirit can only look at you and say, well, what are you going to do next? And when you do it, we'll both know. And you don't like that. You don't like that. The question is always, what am I supposed to be doing? I'll give you the answer yet again, just as I did before. You're supposed to be doing whatever it is that increases the passion and the love of God on this planet the love of human to human, the compassion of human to human, you do that, you'll be in the right place at the right time. That's the answer. Crying, what am I supposed to do with my life? Be compassionate one with another. And the synchronicity will apply to all of you, and you will find the path that is known only to you. You mean there's no master plan? Oh, there are many. Many. Potentials are there for so many things that you might do. We don't know which one you're going to do. Crying, I'm not really sure I like that. I'd like to be told which direction to go. And that, my dear human being, is the difference between the old energy and the new. Here you sit, 8808. So many are saying, well, there's been a lot of teaching today, but what does it really mean? What does it mean? I'm going to tell you what it means in a minute. But I don't want this to be lost on any of you. That you sit in the very energy of 8808 because you changed your future. And in the process of changing your future, you've changed so much else on the planet. The very energy of those few, less than one half of one percent, who are working on this puzzle, the energy of that has changed the planet. And we say it again, when there's only a small amount of light in a large amount of darkness, all of the darkness is changed, you see. All of it is changed. It doesn't take much light to get rid of darkness. Last time we were together, I pleaded with you. I said, don't, don't look at structure, don't look at rules. Just be. I said, please don't make up your mind in advance what you think you're going to be, what you think you're going to do. Just be. What if you had followed the advice of the prophets of old? What if you had? Would you be disappointed today that you didn't all die in a nuclear war? Some would. Well, at least I knew what we were supposed to do, they would say. And there are those like that. Go read Nostradamus and find out what he said. 400 years ago, none of it's happened. It's not going to. It's almost like there was a planet that, that changed so completely that another one took its place and you somehow hopped off the old one and got on the new. That's how different it is. 
And now here you sit at the place of creation. And you're asking, what is this about? Eight, eight, oh eight. So many eights in there. So let us make the subject the eight. You have heard today the energy of the eight as given by the teacher Barbara. You've given what spirit has given to her about the energy of the numbers and what they mean. This is so that you can digest them. Choose for yourself what does it mean to you. If you look at the eight in its simplest form, the number in any language in its simplest form, you will see something that seems to be dichotomous, that is an opposite of what I teach. Responsibility, structure, practical, manifestation. Three out of the four words you don't like. For they fly in the face of even what I told you one week ago. Responsibility, structure, practical. So I'm going to examine these just for a moment, even before I give you the real meaning of why you're here and sitting in these, these chairs about an 888. Let me tell you a little bit about these things so that you'll have a balance. Responsibility. Who are you responsible to? What for? Responsibility. The eight of responsibility. I will tell you that every single human being comes into this earth with one goal. To learn their life lesson. They work it. And we've told you before that once it's discovered, they continue to work it. They may have it completely figured out, but then they get to work it. Like the mathematician who has a puzzle before him. He doesn't know the answer and doesn't know the answer. And finally he knows the answer. What does he do with it? He puts it into the equations and moves forward. That's what you do here. The responsibility, therefore, is to be. And to work the puzzle of life. The responsibility is not necessarily to be the healer. It's not necessarily to work with the kids. It's not necessarily to find the, the twin flame. It is not necessarily this or that. Those things are added to your life path as you solve your life's lesson. Synchronicity occurs and steers you into these things. That's the manifestation of the eight. The eight among all numbers is the one that has the most structure. It has the most practical balance. And you might say practical balance and structure do not fit in an esoteric belief system where you let go and let God and do all these other things in faith. It just, they just don't fit. And Crian has even said, you're not supposed to think things out and think things through in 3D. You're supposed to just be. Let the interdimensional power that comes to you through release take over, I've said to you. So where does structure fit in there? Well, I'm going to tell you. And maybe now you're going to get the picture of how these things balance within the eight. As so above, so below. The eight on its side, the infinity symbol, there is so much here to look at. In order for me to teach this to you, structure, balance, practicality, I'm going to ask you who was your favorite master? Look in history for a minute. Who do you look to? I didn't ask you who you worshipped. I'll say this. If they were alive today, which one would you want to be with? Is it the Buddha? Peaceful in his existence, joyful in his teaching, aligned in a quantum level with everything, in the ancient teaching, 
would it be as the Hindus are? Would it be in an enlightened state with one foot on one side of the veil and one on the other? Would it be a Hindu master? Would it be the Christ? Would it be someone in the lineage of Hawaii who knew of great and grand things and taught the masses? Would it be someone such as Paramahansa Yogananda? Who's the master of your choice? The ones I've not mentioned, perhaps. And I want you to, to imagine for a moment you're with them. And then I'm going to ask you these questions about them. Are they divine? And you'd say, oh, yes. Are they joyful? And you'd say, oh, yes. Do you want to be with them and hold their hand right now? And you'd say, oh, yes, I would. They would be my master. I would love that. And then I'm going to ask you this. Are you ready to receive, therefore, the idea that they have mastered the practical? And the practical is this, that they are so peaceful and comfortable with their 3D being that they're allowed to be divine. That they walk the earth just like you do, only they have the gift of balance. Structure just enough to stay here. Structure just enough to have joy in their life. Listen to me. There are those here who do not know joy. And to smile for some reason is, is just not available to you. And if that's you, I'm going to say, why is it that you will not let the love of God in your heart? Why is it that the angels can sit next to you and you will not give them a second glance? Are you going to let that be all your life? Are you going to walk out of here unchanged? Well, there's a legion of angelic beings who will go with you, Lemurian. Ready to love you and take your hand and let you smile and feel the joy we speak of. But they're not going to do anything unless you let them. Is that practical? Or do you have your own agenda of ego? You might say, I don't have an agenda of ego. If you won't let God in your heart, yes, you do. Yes, you do. You have one that's put out a shield that says, don't touch me. I'm not going to smile today. It is not what you came in for. That's not, that's not what you came in for. Your life lesson, I can tell you, is to open up. For you are the one that's going to do great things. There's something inside, and you know it, that if you open up, it's all over. <laughs> You'll never be the same, and you're right. You might actually smile every day. Is that okay? Is that okay? You know who I'm talking to. You see, I know who is here. We are not separated by a stage electronic equipment that you hear me with don't you know and feel these things inside you as I speak them <laughs> the irony is that as you sit here and I speak about the master you'd like to be with many of you were masters I'll get to that one of the attributes of the eight is manifestation you'll notice that I I listed it last, responsibility, structure, practicality, and manifestation. You know what humans want to do? They want to reverse that. They like to manifest everything they want. And if they have time, they'll study about responsibility and practical things. That's not the way it works. This is a quantum package. They all belong together. Are you stuck? I can't seem to, to manifest in my life, you might say. Are you stuck? Do you feel stuck? 
Well, maybe you should stop trying to manifest and start trying to balance the love of God in your life. And when I speak of God, I mean the spiritual aspects of the family and the heritage that you are and all that is. Including the angel that you are in the universe. Impossible for you to believe. Truly. But you are eternal. There is no such thing as death. Oh, there's earthly death. <laughs> Look at the cultures all the earth look at what they teach what happens at death are you are you over is it gone and the answer is no no almost none of them intuitively you know better the spirit goes someplace else doesn't it something else happens doesn't it there's an attempt at communication isn't there Intuitive it is at the cellular level that death is not the end held by the cultures of the earth almost uniform no matter where you go. How do I tell you something? All right. Let me get to the reason you're here and what the eight means to me. As Cryon, I opened the door to teaching four years ago to my partner. I told him that he was to teach the 12 interdimensional layers of DNA. And to start that, I asked him to seek the help of the teacher Barbara, who was here. And he did. Through a process of four years, I gave him all of the layers of DNA, all of the Hebrew names, what they did, and the functions thereof, the history behind them. I told him to teach it, and he did for a full year. I told him to stop and begin to write the book that would explain the same things he'd been teaching, and he has. Now, I would like to reveal what layer eight really is. And here is where you're going to start feeling the epiphany, the synchronicity. Of why today? Why now? Why in this room? Why cry on? Listen to this. Layers seven and eight, as the teaching goes, was given to humanity by the Pleiadians. They are the two Lemurian layers. This didn't just happen today to facilitate this particular meeting on 888. This has been in the works for a very long time. Here you sit with the activation of layer eight. Wait until you hear what it is if you, if you don't remember, if you haven't heard the news. Rochev Ba'arevot is the Hebrew name for layer eight. It is the second Lemurian layer, the one given by the Pleiadians. It is the spiritual Akash of the human race. The spiritual Akashic record of every single human on earth. One of the names that it has is Writers of the Light. That interprets as light worker. In Lemurian, it means wisdom and responsibility. For it is the Akash. So now I am telling you something that you came to hear. The meaning of the eight, especially today on the 888, is about you and your DNA and the activation thereof. Oh, that's nice crying, but what does it really mean? Well, let's put those pieces together for a moment and let's connect these dots for a moment. Remember where you sit? You're on a mountaintop in Lemuria. This is where it took place. This is where the Pleiadians did the work. What a kawinky dinky that you're here. Ah, uh, cry out of humor. Have you got it yet? 
there's more. Oh, there's more. What is the Akashic Record to you? And you will say, well, this is the, the idea of a record of all my past lives on the planet. For those of you who believe such a thing. And as the thinking would go, they're untouchable. They're a record. You think of records as an archive. You're going to look it up in a big book. You might even get a reader to read a past life. Who were you in your immediate past life? What was the most energetic one? What was the one that was most royal, you might ask? And you'll go ask, ask they'll, they'll look it up, they'll read the Akash within your DNA, and they will give you the information just as they were opening a huge book. And I say, oh, how 3D of you. It's not a book at all. You see, the Akashic Record isn't a record. <laughs> it's an energy of you. Spirit, listen to me. I've said this before. Spirit sees you as a collection of all the energies you have ever been on this planet. For you carry them with you in your DNA. Do you realize what develops life lesson? The responsibility? Do you know what develops it? It's who you've been, what you've done, what you've accomplished, what you have yet to do. That's the catalyst, the three, for life lesson on the planet. You see, the Akashic Record is alive. Everything you've ever done is still there. It is still happening. It has to be. It's interdimensional. There is no time in an interdimensional space. You are in a quantum state with the Akashic Record. That means it is all still happening. I gave a channel not too long ago that I wanted my partner to elaborate on and teach in this next year about the Akashic. So I'll give you a glimpse of that at this moment. If the Akashic Record is not simply the past and not simply an archive, if it indeed resides in you and it's alive and available, what is it do you think you might use it for? And the answer is, this is the new energy. And in this new energy, you're being asked to go into the Akash. And with your spiritual knowledge, as this layer activates, you're going to be able to go to it and pick up the wisdom that you've learned since Lemuria. Paste it onto yourself, bring it from the past forward in your 3D dimension and use it. Profound it is. Well, Cryon, what does this have to do with 2012? A lot. This 888 is not simply threading the eye of the needle between two eclipses. There's a lot more than that. When it comes to Gaia, Gaia is preparing to increase its rate of vibration. There are some who would say the 888 is an early 2012. It is not. It is human beings' reaction to the coming of 2012. It is the preparation, it is the activation of the eighth layer of DNA. Gaia is Gaia. In those caverns of Xochicalco, with the Mayans doing their observatory work, they saw clearly the gyrations of the energy of the planet, both up and down, that is what they wrote of. That is what they put on the glyphs for all to read. 2012 is not some horror that's going to visit you. It is not going to be death on earth. It's not the end of time. It is the beginning, the beginning of a generation long increase in vibration of this planet. That's what it is. And the 888 and the 999 and these things leading up to it is humanity's preparation and activation to be in a new place. We told you this 20 years ago. We told you this in 1989. 
We told you that you could have peace on earth and that there would be those who would create it. We told you about Lemuria. We told you about the mountain here. And here you are. We're almost done. For now, the payoff. I want you to put the pieces together. I want you to connect the dots. What is the Akashic Record really to you? Let's use the word, and this one will ring in the room. The word is ancestry. <laughs> ancestry. Ancestry. I said it early today, you are your own ancestors, dear Laborian. How does it feel to be with yourselves yet again? If you revere your ancestors on this planet, then it's time to revere yourself in a way that opens your heart. It gives you understanding that all that was and all the wisdom that was is available yet again if you dig just a little for it. And that's going to take some structure and some responsibility. That's going to take you being a little more practical, perhaps. Perhaps you'd even accept your mastery along the way and not hide it. Fourteen of you in here have a plan. Fourteen of you in here have been shown something you're supposed to do. And you wonder, is it right, Cryon? And I will tell you, yes, it is, dear ones. And you know how you can tell whether it's right or wrong? Because you have compassion in the plan. And there's love in the plan. And there's a sweetness and a peace in the plan. There is not anxiety in the plan. I just gave you the secret of knowing what to do. Blessed is the human being in here who has heard these words and understands that there is so much to glean within your own DNA. It was mentioned that today it's possible that the eight groups that scattered from here that built the world civilization were represented in the room. That wasn't intuition, that was channeled. It's so. It is so. Can you accept the grandness of that? Although there were others. There were others. For the Lemurian nation was great. But they took their elite and sent them away. They took the ones with the arts and the scientists and they sent them away in eight directions and you were part of it yes these things are not hidden so that you have to come get these things in some private message from a channeler who sits on a stage these things are available to you think of this where do they come from they come intuitively from your own DNA we had one in the room who gave it to you. Pay attention to the messages of spirit. Pay attention to the messages of the ancestors. That's you talking to you. That's you talking to you. It's wisdom. It's responsibility. It's balance. That's the eight. That's what's happening today. A shift, an activation, if you want it. And the reason I mentioned these who shut themselves up to the love of God is to show you how much free will is important to us. We do not force you into anything. You can walk the rest of your life in the dark if you wish. And when you get to the other side, we'll love you just as much. The same number of angels go out with you as go out with the light worker, the healer, the kahuna, the wise one. For you are loved beyond measure. You are loved universally. That's your lineage. On the other side of the veil is watching. What are you going to do next? Will you take it and run with it? Will you believe it? Will you feel it? We'll see, won't we? Dearly loved you are. hard to leave but this is cryon I've never been a human 
and you let me come through a human for a little while and feel what it's like for a little while and that's when I get to feel the love I have for you through a human for a little while and it's great it's perfect it's compassionate and it's not over so it is this is about remembering that nothing is ever lost energy is just an awareness away. Anyone you might have lost, know they're with you. You to inflame spirit, whatever that may be. In the evening, when the kettle's on for tea An old familiar feeling Settles over me And it's your face I see And I believe that you are there In a garden, when I stop to touch a rose and feel the petals soft and sweet against my nose, I smile and I suppose that suddenly you are there. When I'm dreaming And I find myself awake Without a warning <laughs> Then I rub my eyes And fantasize And all at once I realize It's morning and my fantasy is fading Like a distant star at dawn My dearest dream is gone I often think there's just one thing to do Pretend the dream is true And tell myself that you